on antiquity. Our course starts with the Middle Ages, around 400 AD or the Common Era. One of the, why well, I'm going to do a quick video uh, lecture on antiquity, how long it was, right, in relationship to in time. And I'm going to try and talk not too much, which is very difficult. The ancient past, especially before the Middle Ages. So that's our starting point, Middle Ages. And we then if we talk about antiquity, that's what we mean. So we do have 40 or so fragments of music from antiquity. Check this out, okay? And this is a fact. Um, they found these bones in uh, caves in France and, uh, and realized that they were a musical instrument and reassembled a number of them, not just one, a number of them. And uh, so this is dated from 35,000 years ago, a flute and uh, capable of playing an amazing amount of music, including the, the, the national anthem, you know, bum, ba -dum, bum, you can play this, that music on, on this instrument. So what did they, what music did they, perform on this, we don't know. Six thousand years ago, Sumeria, right? You know where this is. Egypt and the Middle East. Tigris and the Euphrates, right? There we go. That's what it is. And what did they do for us? Well, they invented the wheel, excuse me, the sailboat, first written language, frying pans, razors, cosmetic sets, shepherds, pipes, harps, kills to cook, bricks and pottery, bronze, hand tools <clears throat> like hammers and axes, the plow, the plow cedar, and the first superhero. I don't know what that is, Gilgamesh. Anyway, so do you think they had music? We just said they had harps, shepherds, pipes. Yes, they did. This is how this looks today, right? From 4500 BC. How long ago is that? Over 6,000 years ago, almost 7,000 years ago. Oh my gosh. The Great Lakes in the United States were only created. 10,000 years ago. The Egyptian empire was in existence for 3,000 years. Do we have any buildings that we have made or anything that's going to be around 4,500 years. Ancient Egyptian music. This is very interesting. Look at this harp, right? With the strings. Of course, they all were different pitches. Another string instrument. And we talk about the Romans with the guitar and some kind of a wind instrument, right? It has two pipes. So do you think there was harmony if they had two pipes? They say harmony was not invented until, a, you know, a thousand or something like that. It's like, well, come on. And another hand harp. Do you think maybe this 
is a singer? Is this person singing? And then you ask, did they dress like this? The hairstyles? You can learn a lot by looking at art. The Greek city-states, right? The Greeks were before the Romans and uh, they had a basically a uh, overpopulation problem and there's not a lot of places in, in Greece apparently that you can live because of the mountains. And so the valleys had cities in them and once the, they were filled up, they, they set out to find new places to live. And this is, this is what they, they did. And most of the time, they didn't really have to conquer anything. They just moved in and the native people moved out. And uh, so the Greeks were very organized. And, and when they went on one of these missions, it was like we would plan go to the moon or something. They, they would say, okay, we have to have you know, so many uh, of the people that are capable of doing this, so many people capable of doing this. And so they had these um, formulas of like, we're going to take 100 people and we need you know, we need, uh, you know, a doctor and, and we need uh, whatever, but that's, that's how they, they planned. And uh, we, we, when we talk about Greece now, we say, oh, this is here. But Pythagoras was Greek, but he lived in Southern, he lived right here, Croton. That's where Pythagoras lived, a musician, right? And Archimedes, the invent, the, the discoverer of, uh, the principle of buoyancy, right? Lived over here in Syracuse. He's the fellow that supposedly, the story goes that he had his bathtub full of water. He got in the bathtub and water spilled out. And he says, I've got it. And he ran through the streets naked, uh, proclaiming about his discovery. to put things in perspective, right? The Olympic Games. Plato, Aristotle. Plato did live in Athens, Greece. Aristotle probably also, not sure. Well, he was a student, right? Aristotle was a student of Plato. So yeah, both lived in Athens. Here is the Parthenon, which is in Athens. As it looks today, Wow. <clears throat> and apparently how it's falling apart, a lot of it was because of human activity. You know, bombing it in World War II or just dismantling it and, and taking um, <laughs> materials and using them someplace else. Athens, the cradle of democracy. They set us up, folks. The Parthenon again. A lot of the air and is very caustic, and the the rain uh, picks up, and it's it's actually causing a lot of damage because it's like an acid that comes from the rain on the on the stone. Uh, incidentally, right? And we can always tell it's Greek because it does not have arches, right? The Romans invented the arch. So when you see this long piece, no arches, that's Greek. Again, he lived in Southern Italy. We talk about humanistic Greek ideal. <clears throat> they say that the, the, the Greeks, they had their houses and they were very sparsely decorated and they really focused on food and people uh, discussing things around food and probably wine. They had a great uh, respect for music. 
was thought of something basic to activities that were connected with the pursuit of truth or beauty. So certain types of music for certain types of activities, certainly. And you wonder, did they have music? Well, yes, we're going to talk about that. They did have music just for entertainment as opposed to functional music that you use music because you were trying to accomplish something like getting water. Pythagoras, right, the mathematician. He viewed music as a system of pitch and rhythm ruled by the same mathematical laws. And that's how we he discovered the octave because an octave is one half of the full length of a tube or string or whatever. It's a physical um, attribute of you vibrate a string and you divide it in half, this number of cycles are doubled. And the same thing with a pipe. You have a pipe and you make music from it, you divide it in half, the pitch doubles. Amazing, these theaters here, right? Athens theaters. And we know now that the music, this still is how it looks today, right? I mean, how cool would it be to go to an outdoor theater like this and have a play performed in the center here? And they did have musicians, and we now believe that they performed their plays with music and sang the words, if not all of them, some of them. This is a replica of a uh, Greek ship. It's called a trireme, and it had three layers of oars. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but this is a modern reconstruction. And uh, basically, they had uh, like a battering ram. And if anybody came into the harbor, this is how they protected the harbor. They just rammed the invaders or foreigners or visitors if they didn't want them. All right. Here is uh, an example of music, right? We we don't, of course, have any recordings from this time, but this is from a play called Arestes, and it's from 408 BCE, and it's called the Stasman Chorus, and this is some um, intellectuals have put this together in to show us what they believe the music really sounded like. Oh, Lord. 
the extent of the Roman Empire. They didn't conquer Britain until like 117 AD. Ireland was never part of the Roman Empire or Scotland. And if you have seen the movie Braveheart, that's what the movie is about. It's about the Roman British against the Scottish. And Ireland um, is said that in the Middle Ages, uh, it was very primitive because they had no roads. And that's one of the first things the Romans did is they put roads down. And this is what most of the time the soldiers were doing, were making roads. Some of those roads still exist, or they were road choices that are still roads today because they were they were engineers, the Romans, and they, they did amazing things. So all of Northern Africa is part of, is here on the coast of the Mediterranean, was part of the Roman Empire. And uh, Danube River, right, is one of the natural boundaries. And so they would, it was easy to, it was e easy to defend up to the river. And so that was a logical place to, to say, okay, we're going to stop. And the Roman Empire was, was really based on taxes. And one of the things that they did as they moved into areas and advance was to give land to Roman soldiers. And then after you know a while, Roman soldiers didn't want this land. And this is one, one of the things that lead, led to the fall of the Roman Empire. And as well, in order to have population, in order to have taxes, you have to have population. So the Romans would move into other areas and capture people and relocate them to be on Roman territory and tell them, we will protect you and you need to grow crops and we'll show you how to grow crops. But the tax is we get some of the crops. And so this was a this taxing system that the Romans used. And um, so eventually these people were, you know, the Roman Empire was, was based on uh, a number of different cultures and groups of people that um, there was not one particular culture throughout the whole Roman Empire until constantly teen in like, what, 300 uh, made the Christianity, the Catholic Church, uh, the religion of Rome. But uh, these people figured out and started to to say, well, we don't need to pay attention to the soldiers. They don't even come around here very much. And why do we have to pay the taxes? So this is part of the fall. And uh, so this part was one of the major sources of food for Italy. And it became, uh, they lost control. And so they weren't getting the food from there. And uh, Rome itself, uh, we'll, we'll see had a huge population and it dropped way down. And, and so uh, the fall of the Roman Empire was not something that just happened on one day. It was a transition that took place. And, and finally, the, 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 they, somebody else just took over and they just like had, OK, what are we going to do? So we had a new ruler who was a foreigner. Uh, this is. Uh, I'm going to do this to uh, make this big. Let's see how can I do this. Yeah, here we go. This is uh, as it looks today, right? In um, the Roman Forum. And can you imagine this had pillars all the way around it? Okay, like this, these columns. And all of this, another building with columns, uh, these columns. It's what, um, how impressive is that? Look at this. This is a person over here, the size of this. I 
in the Roman Colosseum as it looks today. Uh, this is a Roman legion, right? And and how they were able to conquer by their organization and their equipment that they used. Uh, huh. What would you do if they came marching at you? You'd like get out, right? Okay, here is an example of a Roman piece of music from the first century AD, AD right? Now we call it the Common Era. Uh, and this was written on a tombstone. And of course, it didn't, they didn't write it like this. So I don't know how uh, the means were to, to write this music that they have interpreted it to sound like this. advanced here is a, a uh, Roman bath right and this is added on later but this is their architecture and uh, and this is where people went to have these these common baths and the unique thing about this there was this interaction because normally people separated into different classes but when they went here you had common citizens and you know, higher class citizens as far as wealth and power, and they would meet there and and then talk in the bath. And um, there was people would would you know scrub your back, or you could ask for you know massages and probably bath oils and whatnot. Okay, some modern. Uh, pictures of Roman Empire, how it looks today. Okay, this is from uh, Northern Africa. But wow, is that impressive? Roman theater. What a setting, huh? Do you think they had ushers? Did you have to have a ticket? Was there a program? Another Roman theater as it looks in Turkey today, right? In the country of Turkey. Roman sewer arch as seen today. The arch, there you go. Gladiators. Okay, this is very uh, important that the Roman Empire, we showed you that picture, but in, in 476, it's split in the West and East Division, right? And we talk about Byzantium. Uh, and this was uh, the, it kept thriving in spite of the this part falling in 476. And it, uh, okay, I, 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 I'm not saying that this started in 476, right? Uh, that's, that's not necessarily correct. But it did exist until 1452, when the fall of Constantinople, right here. And um, the Arabs kept trying to take this over because they, they kept losing uh, territory, right? And it got smaller and smaller and smaller. And they had a fortress there and it was on the water. So it was basically easy, relatively easy to defend. And one of the tactics is they had uh, the, the walls 
and the enemy would attack and then they would retreat and then they would because they would throw things at them and then they would open the gates and they would run out and attack the enemy and then they retreat themselves back in there and close the doors and, and this was going on for uh, generations and at one point somebody for some reason the gate didn't get closed and the invaders came in and that was the end of it and this really triggered we'll see the renaissance in europe or one of the things was so many people left <coughs> and went to main the main part of europe and took their education, et cetera, with them. Modern arches, modern arches, right? This was not made by the Romans. The Arch de Triomphe in France. Modern buildings in Roman style, right? This is an English pavilion, but that's in obviously the Romans. Well, it says Roman style, but I don't see an arch, so. Greek style. Okay, uh, the U.S. Capitol building, right? It, and it, the dome was invented by the Romans as well, because a dome is nothing more than a three-dimensional arch. If you take that arch and you turn it, it's a dome. Austin, Texas. So it's Greek because there's no arches here, but this is Roman because that is, again, the arch. The U.S. Supreme Court. Penn Station, Washington, D.C. I was there and I said, wow, check this out. It's, it's that same architecture. Sacramento State Capitol Building. I was driving in Pennsylvania, and there it was. Okay, that's the end of our lecture on antiquity.